Hi everyone, I'm just going to show you the results of the last firing. Uh, it went quite well, um, but just before, as a prequel to it, I'm going to show you what I do at the end of the firing uh, to get rid of an oxidation spot that I have happening. It moves about the kiln according to how I stack the kiln, and uh, my way of getting rid of it is by adding wood to the firing at the end. I move the burners out of the way and uh, add wood for about 30 minutes and it gives a really heavy reduction atmosphere and it gets rid of that oxidation spot. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy it, here we go. Right, we're at 1280 now, cone 10's down at the top and cone 9's down and 10 bending at the bottom, it's time for the uh, fun to start. Okay, uh, let's have a look to see what uh, putting that wood in at the end of the firing uh, does for the firing. Okay, let's have a look now. Right, I've opened up the door and these uh, snarly pots have come out really nice. You can see where I put the, the some nails and bits of detritus from the bottom of the kiln. All the little bits have stuck, there's none coming off. Some are a bit sharp, but it is what it is. Nephilim cyanide's melted, so that's really good. Uh, content's gone over, so that's pretty good at the top there. These pots here have um, fired okay. Nice um, reduction, looks like I've got reduction right the way through, looking at the ones down the back here. Bottom ones here have, to have, have fired okay. The iron's gone quite dark, so that's a lot of reduction that. And all the little kiln fillers have all come out nice. So I'm just going to um, I'll just get all these out now, and uh, we'll have a look at them in a minute. Okay, pots are all out now. Let's have a look at them. Uh, first, the failures. You'll be very careful how you stack your pots on wadding because uh, <laughs> that's what happens there. Never mind. Uh, the bottom of the kiln, I'm still getting the crawling, but some of them have come out quite nice. So I'm almost there. This one I put spodumene in to see if it made an effect and uh, it's crawled and peeled off. So I uh, need to rethink that. But, uh, only lost four of those, so that's not too bad. Uh, major catastrophe. Um, I put a little big gnarly plate in it, it's got a crack in it, and I thought it would open up. So. Uh, with this uh, gnarly plate, you get a free kiln shelf. Won't come off. <laughs> so, oh, it will. There we go. The textures are amazing, so I'm going to make some more. It might glue together actually with kintsugi. I'll see if I can get it off in uh, two pieces. But the iron, the uh, the nails that I put in, have burnt through and welded it to the shell, but uh, possibilities. That's the failures. Uh, successes, all of the little kiln fillers have come out. Um, this is the, uh, the, uh, the dolomite glaze with splashed brushwork on, so they come out okay. These always come okay, these are the uh, chino with the wood ash added, they're okay. Here's some more. New, uh, the dolomite glaze with cobalt on. Some little V shaped ones with the wood ash on, they've come out okay. These were experiments. This is the, um, the um, basically feldspar and 10% clay fired at to nine, nine, uh, cone 9 with a uh, chino inside. So they've come out okay. And all the little uh, nuka moon jars have come out okay, so they're fine. You can control that, that's not a problem. Teapots, are, apart from that teapot that stuck to the, um, the little vases, 
all the other teapots have come out okay. These are fired on shells separately. So they're, they're okay. Just got to test that they pour okay, but they should be alright. So all of those came out. These are the, um, the vases that I showed you in a previous video uh, making them. And this is how they've turned out. So they've turned out quite nice. Iron, cobalt under a, a dolomite glaze. So they're quite sweet. Apart from the two that stuck to the teapot, they've all come out okay. Um, these have got uh, iron brushwork. Uh, sorry, iron oxide glaze underneath with wax resist. And they've come out really nice. You can control that now. Chino mugs with wood ash dusted on. They've all come out okay. Quite a nice spiral pattern on the bottom of those. Yeah, they've all come out okay. And they had a bit of space, so I put a couple of a couple of more ramen bowls in. And they've come out okay. Um, the moon jars that everyone's interested in. The first one that the, that's come out. This has just got the nuka glaze on with the iron speckles underneath. That's perfect. That's a nice pot. Nice shape. Now, the gnarly ones. These have come out really well. You can see there where I put chunks of uh, iron and rust. With a nail in there that's melted down. I also flicked some chino on. So it's giving these orange spots on the top, if you can see. And that's a bit of, uh, that's a bit of kiln that, I, that fell off when I was packing it, and I just stuck it on. Put it in the kiln, I just stuck it on. It's a bit of kiln shelf. That's some more iron, chunks of iron that's melted through and run down. All of the bits that were crumbly are all there. They're not coming off. So they've stuck really well. So that's the first one. This is the second one. This one had a massive nail in it. There you can see it's all bubbled out and run down. Stuck to the shelf a little bit, but that'll grind off. Just a little bit of, uh, lost a bit of the foot ring there, but it's part of the job, I think. The Nephilim cyanide's melted really nicely when I put extra chunks of it on. It's gone pink where I expected it to go pink. They're pretty special. I'm going to scale these up into some double-sized uh, two-piece moon jars. Now that I know that this works, uh, I'm going to start making some big two-piece ones. Uh, and uh, that works. And then the last one, another one with big chunks of uh, rust pushed into it. A bit of chino on the top, nephilim cyanide, like the moon, proper moon jars. But they've come out beautiful. So you win some, you you you, you sort of you, you you win a lot, you lose a bit. This one. <laughs> so there we have it. Very pleased. Okay, some good results there, I think. Um, I'm going to try and make a couple of big two-piece moon jars, and I'll uh, see if I can't video it for you, so you can see what we're doing. And also, I'm going to make a couple of big uh, flat platters to see if we can't get. Uh, the cracking problem sorted. Uh, probably my throwing, it might be something to do with the mixture of the clay, I don't know. But uh, these things happen, uh, we'll just crack on and see if we can't solve it. Okay, see you next time.